Hey up and welcome back to the channel and a new video and what we're going to be doing today in this video we're going to be fitting a Fogstar seat base 230 amp hour lithium battery we're going to be fitting a Victron Orion XS 50 amp DC DC charger we're going to be fitting a Van Bits battery master that's a gobful um, that's all going under driver's seat in this B pillar we're going to be fitting a relay and in the cupboard at the back there, we're going to be fitting a Victron MPPT solar controller. Now, if you're wondering what the relay is going to be doing, we'll, we'll address that elephant in the room by addressing what work, if any, needs to be done to the original Sergeant split charging system. But we'll get back to that in a moment. So just as a bit of background, if you're not aware, this vehicle of ours is a 2023 Swift Carrera. And it's now one year and five months old we bought it brand new and our biggest issue to date is the pathetic it's not really fit for purpose 80 amp hour lead acid leisure battery and this isn't even a dig at swift as i believe in order to keep the cost down all manufacturers will fit the absolute minimum they can get away with but this low end approach a minimal approach is never going to be an issue if you primarily visit campsites where you're on a cup unfortunately for us and i guess a lot of you out there this is not what you buy a camper van motor home for the moment you go off grid camping the factory fitted 80 amp hour lead acid leisure battery it's just not up to the job in our experience if it lasts a day you've done well worst case middle of winter you're looking at about 12 hours 15 hours at best again best case middle of summer wall-to-wall -wall sunshine you're lucky if it lasts a day now just to clear a few things up this video isn't going to be a step-by-step -step video it's not going to be a how-to type video neither is it going to be what you should do to your vehicle I take no responsibilities for what alterations or what modifications you do to your own vehicle. This is just what I've done to ours. Uh, another point to mention is if you don't feel confident or competent in delving into your vehicle's 12 volt systems, then just leave it the hell alone. I'm by no means a qualified auto electrician. However, back in the 1990s and early 2000s, I was heavily involved in high-end SPL and SQ car audio installs. So let's just say on this topic I am familiar with at least the basics of vehicle 12 volt systems. As well as installing the DC to DC charger so we can now control the correct voltage and amperage from our Euro 6 smart alternator to our new lithium battery. There are some very knowledgeable folk out there who say you must actually go one step further and you must also disable the unregulated sergeant split charge system as this was okay for lead acid but it's now not going to be okay for lithium with this in mind i like to do things correctly and i also like to err on the side of caution as i agree with the experts you should never have two potentially competing and potentially conflicting charging systems. Furthermore, these two systems would now try to be charging two different batteries that are of two different chemistries. Without a doubt, the last thing I want to do is cause any damage to my motorhome electronics. Most of all, I also want to avoid any damage to my Euro 6 smart alternator. So out of curiosity, I did price this job up and to replace the alternator, I was told it had cost around £850. Why would anyone risk all that cost and all that hassle for the sake of an isolation relay that costs £4.99? As I mentioned earlier, my previous involvement and knowledge in car audio and vehicle 12 volt systems, therefore, I'm not going into this lithium install completely blind. To help me along, I got chatting to a fellow Carrera owner called Michael. Michael was in the same boat as me. 
He also wished to go down the route of fitting lithium to his Carrera. So with the help of Michael and the help and technical support from Sargent, Fogstar Batteries, Swift and Off-Grid Power Solutions, we're going to be doing this job correctly. So as well as fitting the lithium battery, fitting the DC to DC charger, we're definitely today going to be disabling the original Sargent split charging system with a relay. If you're wondering what the Sargent split charge system is, it's simply an electronic switch that connects the leisure battery to the vehicle battery when the engine's running, so both batteries can receive a charge. This system is okay for a pair of lead acid batteries, but it's not okay for a mix of lead acid and lithium. Right, that's enough chatting. Let's make a start on this install by removing this driver's seat as we need to remove the driver's seat as this is where on this vehicle our leisure battery lives. To remove the driver's seat you need to unclip this front flap. With the front access flap removed you can see the leisure battery. This rear cover is secured at the top by two plastic lugs the two side covers are secured by three posi-drive screws. There are then five T40 Torx bolts. Two are located at the front of the seat and three are located at the rear. There are also two 13mm nuts. These are on welded bolts. One thing to note is on one of these bolts there is an earth wire attached and finally there's a 20 millimeter headed bolt make sure you've had your Weetabix as the seat's quite a heavy lump with the seat removed you can get a much better look at the leisure battery in position under the driver's seat to gain access to the vehicle battery we're going to have to remove the front carpet and also remove this part of the floor that's covering the battery with the cover removed, you can now see the vehicle battery that lives under the front passenger side cab floor. We're also going to be removing this lower B-pillar cover, as this is where our new relay is going to be fitted. Before we go any further, let's have a look at the wiring diagram kindly sent to us by Sargent. What we're doing here is we're adding a relay between our Sargent unit and our leisure battery. What this simply does is when the relay senses the engine is running, it energises, thus cutting the charge to the leisure battery. When the engine isn't running, the relay de-energises, thus reconnecting the leisure battery to the habitation side of the motorhome. To allow this relay to switch, we're simply adding an engine running signal wire. That's a D-plus wire not to be confused with an ignition live wire. This D-plus wire will run from the fourth pin on the Sargent E6 red plug to pin 86 on our new relay. We're then going to run a wire from pin 85 on our relay to a suitable earth. Next, we're gonna be cutting into our leisure battery positive wire from Sargent E8 green plug to pin 87A on our new relay. Then the same wire out of the relay on pin 30 to our leisure battery. And that's it. That's the relay part of the job finished. To ensure our new lithium battery gets the correct charge when the engine's running, we're gonna be installing a new Victron Orion XS DC-DC charger. This has a positive wire input from the vehicle battery a positive wire output to the leisure battery, a single earth wire, and again, we're using our new engine running D plus wire for the switching of the DC DC charger. Our sergeant unit lives here under the rear offside bench seat. We're gonna be removing it from its box and we're gonna be running a D plus wire under the wardrobe behind the wet room, under the front dinette seat 
and up to the B pillar. I found the best method for threading the new D plus wire through was the old coat hangers trick. Here's the new relay in position and whilst we're here I cut into the brown leisure battery wires using a couple of large 2 into 1 terminal blocks and ran these into terminal 87A on the relay and out of terminal 30 on the relay onto the leisure battery. Here's our Sergeant E6 red plug before adding the D plus wire. From 12 volt planet I purchased the correct pin connections and repinned the E6 plug and here's our new red D plus wire on pin 4 and the plug is now back in its position on the board. Moving on to the leisure battery we're going to be reusing the cables and fuses on the habitation side. We're also going to be reusing the two securing straps. Here's our new D plus wire ready for the DC DC charger. Here's the plug for the connection to the habitation side of the vehicle. And this plug is for the electrics in the driver's seat. Onto our new Fogstar 230 amp hour lithium leisure battery. We now have it connected up and also secured with the original straps. Before we refit the sergeant unit, I'll recap as all we've done is we've simply added our D plus wire here. We've run it through a 5 amp fuse and it runs to our B pillar where the new isolation relay has been located. Also at the B pillar we tapped into our leisure battery brown positive wires. Onto the vehicle battery here we have a handy spare mega fuse sized space. So we're taking advantage of this and we're going to be adding a 60 amp mega fuse here with the correct flat headed bolts and flange nylock nuts for a connection to the new Orion DC DC charger. Also here we have this connection and 5 amp fuse. This is for the Vambits battery master. Here we have 2 metres of 20 millimetre red positive cable. This is running under the floor and we have 1 metre of 20 millimetre black negative earth wire. Both cables are going onto the Victron Orion XS DC DC charger. And here is the red 20 millimetre positive input coming from the vehicle battery. This is the black earth cable I've just shown you and this is going to the vehicle ground. Here is the red 20mm positive output going through a 60 amp midi fuse and onto the new lithium battery. Here are the original connections for the habitation side of the vehicle through a 40 amp fuse. And this wire has a 5 amp fuse and this is going to the Van Bits Battery Master. For good measure we've been able to retain the original straps. Last but not least it's out with the old Truma MPPT solar controller and in with the new Victron MPPT smart controller. This new 15 amp controller will accept an input of 220 watts of solar. We currently have a single 100 watt panel so now we have the possibility to add a further solar panel if we so wish at a later date. Now all the equipment's fitted, we need to have a look on the Victron app to check all the settings on the DC-DC charger are correct for our application. You'll remember we used the D-plus connection for the switching, so I needed to ensure the engine shutdown detection was disabled, as this is now obviously not needed when using D-plus. Luckily for us, the one and only setting that needed adjusting 
was to lower the bulk absorption charge setting down from 14.4 volts to 14.2 as recommended by Fogstar batteries when using Victron equipment and again we needed to lower this bulk absorption setting on the smart solar controller a quick mention of the Vambits battery master we've added this unit as it trickle charges the vehicle battery from the leisure battery at the rate of 1.1 amps due to work commitments we generally go away in our fun bus every three weeks and was finding after three weeks of the van being sat idle on the driveway our vehicle battery was getting dangerously low on charge with the battery master fitted our vehicle battery is now held at a very healthy state of charge now to conclude the two questions you'll want to know is how much has this install cost and do we think the modification is worth doing well we think it is yes without a doubt it's made a massive difference to our vans off-grid usability we've just been away for a long weekend to shell island at north wales and we left home with the new fogstar leisure battery and it was on 51 percent we drove for two hours and 20 minutes to shell island and on arrival our battery was on 97 percent normally we'd wake up on day two and we'd have to turn the fridge off as the low battery alarm would be sounding but was pleased to wake up on day two and we still had 84 percent battery remaining we woke up on day three with 60 percent battery remaining and we woke up on day four with 45 percent battery remaining now worst case scenario middle of winter i think you're looking at about at least five days off grid and in the middle of summer i think you could do well over a week so on to the cost the battery cost 650 pounds the battery master was 73 pounds 94 the victron orion xs was 242 pounds 10 pence the victron smart solar mppt was 53 pounds 29 the relay was 4.99 we spent 15 pounds 20 on the thicker cable we spent 24 pounds 18 on wire we spent 29 pounds 41 on connections and heat sink and we spent 34 pounds 89 on fuses and holders and all that came to a total of 1108 pounds now that's the end of this video and to sum up changing from a lead acid leisure battery to a lithium battery it really has made a difference to our vehicle if you're still watching this video to the end then a massive thank you if it's helped you or you found it interesting then give us a thumbs up and if you want to see what tracy and i get up to on weekends away then consider subscribing it's completely free thanks again for tuning in and hopefully We'll catch up with you on the next one. Cheers.